what is going on with this engine that it will not run? I mean, it's got me perplexed. is filmed on location in Podunk County. Oh, great. It's the chief. It's never good when he calls. Hello, chief. Hey, I gotta send the rookie down to you. What? Yeah, I know. A rookie? Yeah. I don't have time to be training any rookie. Sorry, my hands are tied. I've got serious lawnmower crimes to investigate. Sorry, Terrell. It was handed down from above. Oh, this is coming straight from the top? Yeah. Well, I guess I got no choice then, do I? No, you don't. Send him over. Hey, wait, don't you hang up on me. Hey, cuz. Oh, great. Gerald Jack, what do you want? I'm the new rookie. Chief sent me over. You want me to tase him, detective? Not yet. There'll be plenty of time for that later. We don't have time to go over everything, but we're going on a stakeout. What? We're going to a steakhouse? Great! I'm hungry! No, rookie! A stakeout! And you got the most important job of all! Hitting up Dunkman's Donuts and getting us plenty of coffee and donuts. We're going to be out there a while. So hop to it. Coffee and donuts? At a steakhouse? There he is. He's back. Where's that rookie with that coffee and donuts? Yeah, what's taking so long? There he is! Hey guys, I got the coffee and donuts you wanted. What the heck is he doing? He's gonna blow our cover! Great! Six months of work, down the drain. Oh, hey there, DoorDash. I just put the order in a couple of seconds ago. You're really fast, wow. Yeah, let me get that from you. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, I got a little something for you for such a great job. Here you go. Don't spend it all in one place now. Thanks, fella. Yeah, no problem. Gerald! What are you doing? Get over here! Was that guy that took the coffee and donuts another detective? No, rookie. That was a suspect we have under surveillance. You almost blew the whole operation! Ah, there he goes! Great, you just got away, detective. Way to go, rookie. I'm sorry, guys. Hey, is it time to go to that steakhouse now? <sighs> Today's video is going to be on brakes and scrap them, and guess what? They're really dropping the ball lately. You know, I used to think they were a good company, but not anymore. It's just getting worse and worse. And I'll tell you why. And it has to do with this engine here. This engine is under warranty. It's less than two years old. It needs a camshaft. Guess what? Can't get the camshaft. Can't get a lot of parts for this engine. Luckily that it's still under warranty, 
they're probably going to pay to replace the whole engine. But what if you have one of these engines and, it, and it's just out of warranty and you need that same part? You're not going to be able to get it. And the only way to fix it is you're going to have to buy a new engine. And you know what this engine, the list price on this engine is? 2023, $514.99. So $515 plus whatever the freight is. And I know what you're saying. I can hear you. Just put a Predator on it, Carol. Just put a Predator on it. That may be an option. But if we go that option, there's a couple things we have to keep in mind. And those things are the crankshaft, diameter and length, and the muffkin. Because when you go to repower these vacs, that muffkin has got to be right next to here. And most of these Predator engines, the muffkin sticks out past. So you're not going to be able to get this shroud on. But what I'm thinking is, if we did have to repower this, or you, the grass rat out there, had to repower it with a Predator Right now, you can get the muffkin. That's one part you can get. But there's a lot of parts on this engine you can't get. But the muffkin you can. And we're gonna find out if that muffkin is gonna fit on that Predator later on in the video. But I'm gonna show you what I mean by the muffkin sticks out. So we got some, some of these Chinese engines this is a Scrub Cadet, Chinese engine, 208 cc. This is a Craftsman branded Snowblower Chinese engine, 208 cc. Gas tanks are similar. Dipstick is in the same spot. But look, this muffkin's sticking out past here. So that'd be no good for that vac. This is sticking out too far. Another thing, like I said earlier, crankshaft, diameter and length. Look at that. That's got a funky, stubby crankshaft, three quarters of an inch. Some of these lawn vacs have one inch diameter crankshaft. Some of them have a funny taper to it. So this engine wouldn't work. We wouldn't be able to repower that vac with this one, even if we had the Briggs Muffkin. This is a snowblower engine, see? It's, it's flat enough. It would work on that back. The muffkin ain't sticking out. Problem is, being a snowblower engine, no air filter. You're gonna be running a track back with no air filter, sucking in all that dirt and leaves and stuff. It ruined this engine. And another thing, this crankshaft is seven eighths. It's not one inch, it's not three quarter. It doesn't have that funny taper. This wouldn't work. Electric starter you could take off because it's sticking out past, but again, it's not as simple as just, well, I'll just go to Harbor Freight, get me an engine, throw it on there. No, it's not that simple. All right, so let's get back to this. So this thing came in, won't start, Needs a camshaft. Look up the parts. Currently not available. Now I don't know what currently means. Means is it going to be available in the future? That's not going to do this customer any justice. He wants to pick up his leaves or pick up his grass. That's why he bought this. So me being a Briggs dealer and this thing still being under warranty I had to call them. I go, what does that mean? How am I gonna how am I gonna fix this for the customer? It's still under warranty. So what I have to do is I have to get an authorization first. So I have to tear this thing down, take pictures of it, file the warranty, wait to see if it gets authorized, then they're gonna send me a brand new engine. But again, what if you got one of these engines? and it fails. Say it fails a month after the two-year warranty. 
chances are they're not going to cover it. Again, you're going to have to come up with a solution. So we're going to go over here and we're going to look at the parts list and show you what it says. So here we are, right here. This is where the camshaft, the crankshaft, piston, all the internal parts, and look. Currently not available, currently not available, currently not available, everything, not available, currently not available. If you wanted to buy, just say a gasket, you wanted number 12, the gasket. Not available individually, see reference 358, that's a gasket set, you would have to buy the whole gasket set. Let's see number 28, click on that. Currently not available, the pin for the piston, 29. Oh, you can get the connecting rod, all right. 25. Oh, we can get the piston, 16. Oh, we can get the crankshaft, camshaft, which is what we need. Currently not available, and all these other parts. Currently not available. So this is getting frustrating, and it doesn't matter what part parts lookup you use. Here, here's uh, Pro Parts. Same thing. Here's that same window, same model engine. It's a 10R 232, just like this one. 10R 232. That's our type number and all that. They do theirs a little differently. They show you there's only eight parts available in this window, in this breakdown. Here's a parts tree. Same thing. You know, you click on these, it tells you the price. Not available. Not available. Available. So it just shows you not available, what's available, and then here's jacks. So it doesn't matter what you what you look at, it'll tell you. So here's the muffkins. Uh, I don't know what that means. Something failed. I don't know. Maybe I was on it too long. But the muffkins are available. Let me go to another one. Here we go. Exhaust. We can get the muffins. There's part numbers for the muffins. They have three different type of muffins. So you may be able to buy the Harbor Freight engine. Then you're going to have to turn around and buy this muffin, which is about $65. Or if your muffkin is good on your engine, you may be able to transfer the muffkin to that Harbor Freight engine. We're going to find out tomorrow. Elkskins is going to be bringing in. He's got a carcass of a Harbor Freight engine. We're going to see if, if the muffkin from the Briggs is going to fit on the Harbor Freight. And then we're also going to see if that camshaft is going to work in this brakes and scrapple. But chances are this, this customer here is going to end up getting a brand new engine. But again, as part of the pre-authorization for warranty, I need to tear the engine down, take the bad camshaft out, take pictures of it all, send it in, which is a lot of, a lot of work to do all this. But again, I'm helping this customer because I feel bad that he's getting screwed by having this engine that's not even two years old. So I can hear you out there, grass rats. I hear, well, how do you know the camshaft's bad, Terrell? Let's 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 see why the camshaft's bad. Okay, that's a that's a good question, grass rats. So come over here, Mr. Cameraman, and give it a listen. What it is is it's sticking. The compression release on the cam, usually these compression releases are breaking. This one's stuck to where it's bumping. It's bumping the valve all the time. 
and it won't let it start. And you'll hear it click, 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 and then I'm gonna pull the valve cover off. Hear it clicking? That's the compression release. So I'm gonna pull that valve cover off real quick. I've got it all set up. I've only got two, two screws in there. Hold it on. Put that in here. Now you can watch. We've got clearance in our valves. Hear that click? That's the compression release. We got clearance on this one. Now we did have this engine started, but as it ran, it would just slowly start losing power, and then it would just shut off. Because I got it on, and I got it choked, but we, it will not start. Now there was a couple of times we were able to get this engine to start and it would start off real strong and then after about 30 seconds or so it would slowly start to lose power. So there's something, something in the valve train. I don't know if that compression release is sticking open or if there's another problem in the valve train, but that's what it's got to be because it's got spark and the, it's got a brand new plug in it and like I said it's got It'll, it'll start off strong and then all of a sudden it'll just slowly start to lose power to the point where it'll just it'll just die out and then you won't be able to get it started again. We got the right clearance. We got the right clearance on the on the valves. So let me see if I can get it to start like I did before. And uh, you can hear what it's doing. plugging it but I'm gonna try another plug just in case you never know might have a bad plug which is not tear this thing down. There's got to be something in that valve train. Let's see what kind of camshaft they got in this thing. Maybe it's another one of these plastic ones and it, it twisted a little bit, but it's perplexing because it did run. It ran strong and then it would just slowly lose power. So I know it can't be like a flywheel key that sheer. Because usually when a flywheel key is sheared, it throws the timing off. It'll either kick, try to rip the rope out of your hand. It's not going to run and then lose power like that. So I'm going to go ahead and pull all this off. Pull the side cover off. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's the, it's the cam staff. There's got to be something wrong with the cam. Again, this thing's like brand new. Nothing's broke. I mean, I can't even get it to run on dinosaur farts when I spray it in there. But once in a while we can get it to run, but then it just loses power and just dies out. We had it running a minute ago, it warmed up. Thought we could do it again on camera. Something wrong with this engine. Oh, I know what's wrong with it. 
It's crap. Oh, this is what it needs. It's missing this. Once I affix this decal to it, it should go on fine. You can get this in our online store, along with all the other stickers that we got. So let me put that on and try starting it again. All right, I got the fan and everything all tore off of it, so you can get a look at it. This has got a three-quarter crankshaft. Again, there's certain model track back brands that have one inch, older agrofabs that have a tapered shaft for the fan. So now that we got that tore down, I'm gonna try starting it again. Now that I got all that weight off of there. So let's see what happens. Shouldn't have to do that. Should just be able to pull it and it'll start. See? It's not starting. And it ran fine. It was running. High RPM. Again, if the timing was off, the muffin would be like glowing cherry red. The reason it's smoking is blowing a bunch of oil because I got the valve cover off up on the muffin. Like the valve timing is off. Alright. Now I'm gonna slurp all the dinosaur syrup out of it and let's pull this, this cover off. Doesn't have any kind of low oil shutdown on it or anything like that, so it's not any of that. All right, extracted all the syrup out of it. I'll put a pan under it and pull that cover off. All right, I got all the bolts out of it. Just as I expected. Plastic can shaft. There's our uh, compression release. So something went wrong here. I don't know if this pin turned and threw the cam timing off. I mean, I'm going to take pictures of this. And what are they going to say? Well, oh, cam looks fine to us. We don't think it's the camshaft. We're not going to pay for a new engine. Yeah, well, it doesn't run. Yeah. Or this compression release. Let's see, that rides up against there. You can hear it clicking. I'm thinking that this thing, when it's spinning, it's supposed to throw this away so you stop here and centrifugal force is supposed to pull this away I'm thinking that this isn't being pulled away it's still bumping the valve 
once it starts, it's not flinging it out of the way. There's nothing in there. I don't see anything that would hinder it. See any kind of metal or... So what we're gonna do is we're gonna wait. See what that cam and that Predator engine looks like. Maybe we'll pop that in, put the cover back on. I ain't too worried about the gasket if it leaks a little bit. And then see if it'll start with that Predator cam. So I don't wanna start messing with this thing. There was a way I could. I guess I can't take it off of here. Looks like it just snaps in there. Remove it, stick it back in, and see if it starts. Here's the governor. We know the governor is working. This thing comes off pretty easy. It just snaps in there like that. And then this just comes out. I could always uh, put it back in there just to see if this is the problem. I'll go ahead and bolt that cover on, put some syrup in there. Because this shaft turning inside of here really isn't going to make any kind of difference because this, our timing is controlled by this and our lobes are good. And I don't see the, it's not broke. I think it's that compression release. We're gonna find out here in a minute. All right, let's see if it'll start without that compression release on there. started a lot easier. I'm going to put the valve cover back on. And put that fan and everything back on. I'll just put, it, put enough screws in it to hold it. Well, let me put this on first. and see if it'll start easy again. Put two screws to hold this on. Put that vent tube in, crankcase breather tube. We turn it back on and see if it starts. Same thing. All right. Just have to wait till we get that cam tomorrow. Predator cam and see if it's the same. So I'm gonna do a compression test. So I wanna show you that this engine runs. 
the scrub cadet engine. So I'm just going to spray some dinosaur farts in there. To show you that it runs and dies. And then we're going to do a compression test on it. Then I'm going to do one on that engine. Because I know what you're saying. It's probably not the cam, Terrell. It probably needs a valve job. It's probably something with the valves on ceiling. It could be. But again, these are similar Chinese engines. And it's got 60 pounds. See what kind of compression this one's got. This one's got 80. It's got 20 pounds more. Than that scrub cadet Chinese engine. It could be, maybe it does got a valve problem. Maybe one of the valves ain't sealing when it gets hot. It's kind of cooled down now. See if it'll start again. I may end up having to tear this whole thing apart. Every nut and bolt. It's on. Choke it. It just doesn't feel right. wide open. Take the muffin off. Maybe something crawled up in there and plugged the muffin. I got the muffin off. Let's see if that might be the problem. This thing pulls so easy, it don't even need that compression release on that cam. It's not like it's jerking it back out of my hand or anything. I don't think it's the muskin. not starting. You know why? There's something definitely wrong with this engine. And again, not even two years old. Elkskins brought in that Predator engine and we're gonna go over from this brakes and scrap them engine to the Predator engine which parts will interchange. And we're gonna start with the Mufkin. Remember, this is the brakes and scrap them muffkin that's got to be tucked in in order for it to work on this vac. And this is the Predator engine here. So look, it's just off slightly. So all you'd have to do is open up the holes on yours. So if you had one of these 10R brakes and scrap them engines because that's the model of that engine it's a 10 cubic inch motor you can buy the predator engine as long as you got the three-quarter crank and put your muffkin on the predator engine and get rid of that brakes and scrap them 
This is the camshaft. Everything on this side is Predator. Everything on this side is brakes and scrapple. So this is the Predator camshaft. It's a solid cast camshaft, which is good. So, I mean, these engines are pretty good from what everybody tells me. And a lot of the Honda parts will interchange. And then this is the brakes and scrap them one. This cam will not work in that brakes and scrap them. This isn't big enough to fit in there. And then of course, the other end in the block would also have to be opened up. So that's not gonna work. But I don't think the camshaft is the problem with this engine. But we just wanna go over some of this stuff. Now here's a Honda base gasket or sump gasket. This is a Stenz brand one. There's the Stenz part number. There's the Honda number. It's for the GX 160 and 200. Identical. Identical rip off copy of the Honda. It also works on the Predator. Exact copy. Like I said, some of these will interchange. So that'll save you money, some grass rats. Say you get one of these 10R, 10 cubic inch brakes and scrap them engines in, and the sump gasket's leaking, or the valve cover gasket's leaking, and you look up that Briggs engine, you gotta buy the whole gasket set. You can't buy the, the gaskets individually. So then you'll go, oh, well, Terrell, Terrell showed me that I can buy the, the Stenz one or the Honda one. Here's the brakes and scrap them. See, it's got the little Briggs emblem on it. Valve cover. Here's the Harbor Freight valve cover. Identical. Also on this sump cover, it's got the Briggs logo casted in it. That's how we know this is the Briggs one. Still got a ball bearing and all that. Here's the Stenz Honda replacement valve cover gasket. It's a little different than the Predator and the, and the brakes and scrap them. There's the part numbers again. But it'll work because that's all you need for it to seal is in this area. So, got one of these... Again, you got one of these brakes and scrap them comes in and you gotta adjust the valves or something and oh I gotta buy the whole gotta buy the whole rootin' and tootin' gasket set just to get the valve cover gasket. No, you don't have to. You can get this Honda one or the Stenz one. Another thing, the lifters and the push rods. This is all brakes and scrap them off that 10 R. This is Predator. Push rods, a little bit shorter than the brakes and scrap them. Just a hair shorter. So that may be a problem if you're trying to swap parts from one engine to another. The lifter, here's the valve lifters. This is out of the Predator. This is out of that brakes and scrap them. It's different, shorter. Brakes and scrap them shorter, Predators longer. So, not all parts will interchange with these Chinese engines. Got to match everything up. I don't know if this cam, this Predator cam will work in the Honda or vice versa. The Honda one will work in the Predator. I don't know. Maybe there's a grass rat out there that's interchanged them and knows. But... I, uh, I don't know about that. So, what have we done so far? Still can't get this engine running. I've never been this baffled before on an engine, especially a little tiny single cylinder engine like this. It's not the cam. The lobes aren't worn. There's nothing that's spinning. I took the compression release off, put it back on. Makes no difference. Still won't start. I checked the, the flywheel key. Just for the heck of it, it's got a woodruff key. It's not sheared. I pulled the carburetor off, looked at that, man, that plastic manifold plate behind it. That's not cracked. The gaskets were good. The carburetor has never been off. 
I also thought, well, maybe this gear had spun on the crank. No, it's on there tight. I put some channel locks on there and on the crank and tried to see if I could move it. It doesn't move. The valves seem to be sealing. There's no time on it. I may have to pull the head. The only other thing I could possibly think of why this engine won't run correctly is might be the coil. Even though the coil is sparking, it might be sparking at the wrong time. And if it's sparking at the wrong time, it's not going to start. It wants to start sometimes, sometimes it don't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it all back together again. Put the get all the valves and everything all back on. We we you know also eliminated thought maybe the muffkin was plugged, maybe some mud daubers or something got in there and plugged the muffkin. That's why we tried starting with the muffkin off. I mean it's got me perplexed. And it might be something as simple as the coil's bad. But I'm gonna go ahead and put it all back together and we're gonna try it again. Alright, put it all back together. Put the other coil on it, put a brand new coil on it. Honda coil, still wouldn't start. Same thing, acting the same way. So then I thought, well maybe that gear on the crankshaft, you know, maybe it did spin because there's no there's no keyway on here. It's like pressed on. I thought, well maybe it moved. So I lined up, this is on the Predator now, so I lined up the timing marks, and when you line up the timing marks, you know, the piston is exactly at top dead center. So I checked that on that brakes and scrap them one, and they lined up perfect, the timing marks, at top dead center. So then I decided, I'm just going to pull the head. I mean, what else, I've done everything else. So I pulled the head, and I'll show you the differences between the, the Predator and the Brakes and Scrap'em. So again, the Brakes and Scrap'em one's over here, and this is the Predator one. Now they're identical again. They look identical. Probably came out of the same factory. The difference is these locating pins for the gasket. This is the Predator gasket. So you got your locating pins here. And I'm sure this gasket is the same as the Honda GX 160 or 200. On the brakes and scrap them, the locating pins are here. That Predator gasket will work in place of the brakes and scrap them one. Again, if you just want to buy individual gaskets instead of having to buy the whole gasket set which is Briggs is making you do because the gaskets are are identical again they're all ripping each other off it seems like so they're machined so you can move those pins around voila there it fits where you can move it here for this, for the brakes and scrapping one. So, head gasket's not blown anywhere. Like I said, I brought it to top dead center. Timing marks line up like they're supposed to. So it's got to be something that's throwing this thing off. The only other difference of these heads from the Predator the brakes and scrap them is they use these little caps like the Honda does that fit in there the Predator doesn't use those little caps so that may be why the push rods might be a little shorter or a little longer whatever I said but this this little cover and everything is the same I mean there's different casting numbers on there but it's basically the same. I'm like, all right, why does one got 60 pounds compression and it runs, and this has got 80 pounds compression and it doesn't run? What is going on with this engine that it will not run? Again, check the 
the flywheel key. I'm, I'm thinking it was the cam at first because I thought the compression release was stuck and it wouldn't release when it would start running. You know, because I heard the clicking and I thought, all right, maybe it just stuck and it's not throwing itself out of the way, but that wasn't the case because it still wouldn't run. So I'm looking at the valves, I'm looking at the head to see if there's any cracks or breaches anywhere. The only thing I can see is the exhaust valve. I can turn it. It's not totally sealing, but I can turn the one on this Predator. Barely. Yeah, I can turn it a little bit. So I'm going to pop the valve. This, this engine's probably got 10 hours on it. I don't know why it would need a valve job already. But this thing has really got me stumped. Looks like it's sealing all the way around. I guess I'll clean up the valves and try lapping them in and see what happens. The seats are in there. It's not like the seat is coming out. The valve guides are in there. Uh oh. It's money calling. Alright, I'm at my wit's end with this engine. It will not start. Everything's checking out the way it's supposed to. So, what I'm going to do now is what's called a leak down test. And that's to see if you have any leaks anywhere through the valves, through the rings. And then that'll give us an indication of what's going on. So if you don't know anything about a leak down tester, this is a leak down tester. This one's from Harbor Freight. It's a cheap one. So the first thing you do is when you get one of these is you hook the air to it. It's got a regulator on it. And we're going to turn the regulator in until this thing goes to zero on set because we're setting the gauge. So you got to be kind of easy with it because you don't want to over, you know, put too much air to the gauge. It keeps climbing a little bit. So you just gotta bump it a little. See how it keeps climbing, I got my hand off of it. Cause this is a cheap one. I'm sure there's other ones that are better. So we wanna get it to zero. And there we have it, that's close enough. Now, you got to have both valves closed, piston at top dead center. So when you go to shove this onto this to put the air in the cylinder, of course the air is going to want to push the piston down. So you're going to have to hold the crankshaft from doing that. So Mr. Cameraman is going to hold the crankshaft. So we're at top dead center, both valves are closed. I know they're closed because I got the push rods off of it. And then I'm going to hook this on, and then we're going to read the gauge, and look. It should only have about 6%. And we, you know, it should be in this green range. Actually, this should be down here. It's at moderate, but I don't think that's, that's good. And I'll tell you why I think these rings aren't seated. Because the customer unknowingly probably put synthetic oil in this. And when you get a new engine, you're supposed to put just regular motor oil in there. Excuse me. Regular motor oil in it petroleum based oil so the rings will seat and then after the break-in period of five or six hours then you can change the oil 
because the rings are seeded and then you can put synthetic oil in it after that but if you do it before that as I mentioned in rebuild videos you got to put petroleum based oil in there so the rings will seat these rings probably haven't seated like I said this engines probably only got about 10 hours on it so that's why I'm like okay why do I why do I need to do a leak down test you know this thing is like brand new duh not thinking that you know it's hard it's hard to hard to know what other people are doing to this equipment so it sends you down a rabbit hole you know we're doing a compression test it's got 80 pounds the other engine's got 60 pounds it runs fine this one we can't get it to run can't even get it to run at all now checking everything is it the timings off is it the flywheel key is it the coil bad does it need a valve job is it just all this craziness trying to figure this out and it could be something as simple as the rings aren't seated so the compression is leak, leaking past the rings and it doesn't have enough compression to start even though the compression tester says it's got 80 pounds this is what I think it is so now I'm gonna to have to pull the piston out put the rings in the bore see what kind of gap we got and see if we can get this stupid thing to run because it is driving me nuts I'm already nuts so it's just making me nuttier alright so I don't trust this Harbor Freight piece of crap leak down tester so we know this engine runs so let's do a leak down test on this engine because this engine runs and see what kind of reading we get now I got vice grips holding it so it's not going to push the piston down we're at top dead center both valves are closed And look, we're in the green. We're in the green range. So yeah, that might be our problem. Bad or not seated rings. I'm going to take this off and yeah, see it push the piston down. That's why you got to have the piston at top dead center. I finally figured out what's wrong with it maybe you can put in the comment section what you think's wrong with it but you'll find out what's wrong with it after I tell you what's wrong with it never seen this on an engine with this little bit of hours on it and here we go stuck rings the piston rings are stuck The top two ones are stuck. The oil ring is free. The first two top rings are stuck. Never seen that. I've seen stuck rings before. I had rings stuck on my fingers. Couldn't get them off. But uh, these are stuck in a piston. So, since I'm a Briggs dealer, I'm going to file a warranty on it. So I filed the warranty this morning, this afternoon, they already paid it. Sent them a bunch of pictures, sent them pictures of the cam, the head, the air filter, because I want them to see everything to know that there's nothing the customer did. Because remember earlier I said that it might have been synthetic oil and the rings didn't see? No, it's not synthetic oil. It had nothing to do with it. I don't know I don't know why well I kind of know why because they're having this stuff made overseas breaks and scrap them they should be ashamed of themselves so I talked to my brother Farrell find out if he he knew had any problems with with these engines and the problems he's seen is they had them uh, where the uh, gas cap is not venting and it's restricting the airflow and they were starving for fuel so he said they had a bunch of them and then today the customer brought in another agrifab lawn vac 
with the same engine on it, and I go, oh, here's another one of these. Can't get it started. I checked his out. His is full of water. He left it outside. Got a bunch of water in it. But the gas cap ain't venting, because when I tried to drain the water out with the cap on, through the drain on the, on the carburetor, it would drain out so much and then it just stopped. As soon as I took the gas cap off, it started flowing again. So that gas cap is a problem with these things. Here, this thing, this cap, not venting. They also said they had some engines come in where they over tighten the nut on the, the flywheel nut on the crankshaft and it actually broke the flywheel. That's what my brother Farrell said. So I don't know what's going on over there at Frakes and Scrapple. But you know what? They break and you scrap them. So they paid the warranty. They looked at all the photos and paid it within hours of me submitting it. Sometimes I've submitted them ahead of wait two or three days. No, paid it right away. So now I gotta wait for the replacement parts. We'll put the thing back together. And then as Elskin says, fire it up, fire it up, fire shut up! Where is he? He's not here, but he did bring its ascension. And there's your engine, your dinner on this engine. This engine that had me stumped. And the only reason it had me stumped is because of the low amount of hours on it. And why it would stick the rings already. I've never had to use a, a leak down tester on a motor. I've had engines that had big score marks in the cylinders and still ran. So I'm like, why has this thing got 80 pounds of compression and it won't run? It's got spark. It's getting fuel. Pulling on it and I'm like, the plug is dry. The spark plug is dry. It's not pulling the fuel up. Why is that? Stuck rings. Crazy. Very crazy. But we figured it out, and I hope this helps you to figure out whatever you're stumped. When you got an engine problem, because boy, this one really had me stumped. Well, the parts came in, new piston and rings, gasket set, put the engine back together, flip on the switch, put choke on. tell you but you already know what a piece of crap this thing is overpriced piece of crap so now shortly here it's going to be out of warranty so I'm going to suggest to this customer Harbor Freight engine we'll just put that muffkin on the Harbor Freight engine but there you have it see had me stumped so I hope you learned something and if you did subscribe to this YouTube channel Terrell fixes all. That's me, Terrell. Check out our web store. We got all kinds of stuff like this camo shirt, spark plug necklace, bleeding gas and oil, or just bleeding because you nicked yourself or smashed yourself or whacked your finger with a with a with a finger, whacked your finger with a hammer. Follow me with your junk Chinese-made engines on Facebook and Instagram. And as always. There's your dinner. Woo! Figured it out. Took a lot of time and we all learned something. Leak down test. There's your dinner. Ha! He's back. Looks like he didn't blow the case after all. You got lucky, rookie. What do we do now, detective? We'll need to infiltrate. Ha! Huh. Well, that would be highly dangerous. 
This guy's a vicious criminal. Well, who should we send in there? Can I help you? I got the coffee and donuts you ordered. Oh, well, today must be my lucky day. Because this is the third time I've had coffee and donuts delivered. I didn't even call this last time. Oh, oh, sorry, guy. I'm, I'm all out of pennies. That's all right. This one's on the house. Oh, why are you winking at me? No reason. Get out of there, rookie. You're blowing it. Yeah, I got the shit that the stolen mowers in right now. I'm looking at them. Yeah, they look great. We're gonna make a ton of money off these things. The cops in this town? Come on. They're a joke. They're so stupid. They don't know what's going on. No, no, don't bring any more coffee or donuts. I got enough. All right, we got them. Let's move in. I'm gonna need a couple more rolls of them pennies. I gave my last couple out to the delivery guy. Freeze! Hands up! Oh, I, I gotta call you back. Cops are here to arrest me. That's lawnmower detectives to you, Ronnie. Hands behind your back. Yeah. All right, scumbag, hands behind uh. your back. Come on. You know the routine. Uh. Easy on them donuts, rookie. You just earned yourself a steak dinner. Great. Thanks, detective. <laughs>